Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Leadership Speak series at El Forum. Today, I have a very exciting uh, speaker on our show. He has been a soldier. He is a storyteller. He's an actor and an entrepreneur. Uh, his story uh, goes way back where he started off uh, in the Indian Armed Forces, and today he is uh, doing multiple things. So without further ado, I'd love to invite uh, Mr. Kulpreet Yadav to our show. Welcome to the show, Kulpreet. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. is entirely mine as well. And uh, my first question to you would be, tell us your journey as a leader, this exciting journey that you have traversed as a soldier and what you do right now. Uh, thank you very much, Ringo. First of all, I would like to say that I'm grateful that we're having this conversation. Thank and you. Uh, at the outset, I must say that I would like to keep it as honest and as practical as possible, depending on what I've learned. Of course, I've not done everything that everyone does, uh, but my experience in a certain way has been unique, as we've discussed. And uh, whatever lessons I've learned, they've been useful to me, and I would be very happy to share those lessons with all your listeners. Uh, my journey as a leader, so my dad was in the Air Force. So I obviously uh, come from armed forces background. My grandfather was a soldier as well. And uh, I wanted to become a soldier. I think it was a very logical thing for me to do. I was attracted by uniform, by drill, by weapons, by discipline, by punctuality and by all that. So I ended up joining the Naval Officers Academy in 1991 after doing my graduation from Pune in Nauru Shivania College. I went to academy. It was a dream come true. I had a fabulous life, great training, great uh, formative years. And thereafter, I went on to command ships. And that's the first major leadership challenge that I faced when you have to take 100 odd men, uh, men and material against adverse conditions, you know, in enemy waters or sometimes you're just on the, on the border of enemy. Uh, fighting and chasing poachers and smugglers and there's a threat to life and still you have to motivate your people and make them to go on and take that extraordinary risk. That was the first leadership challenge. Armed Forces career uh, went off very well. I uh, finally, uh, as they say, uh, hung up my boots in 2014 uh, after 23 long years. And uh, the reason for that was the fact that I wanted to explore something else, which had happened by accident while I was in the service in one of my remote postings in a very small harbor in West Bengal. I would ended up writing my first novel, uh, which was in 2006, and it did well. Not that well, but it did okay. And thereafter, two more books, and somehow I got more fascinated by this world of storytelling. And I thought I, I would not be doing a justice if I put two my, my legs in two different boats, you know, because uh, Armed Force is all about discipline, you know, so it's not, it is not that creative and uh, writing is, is, a, is a creative pursuit. So it was very difficult for me and I wanted to be honest to the work that I do. So I became a writer, which is a kind of solitary life. But then, yes, there are some leadership aspects which are important there as well, because you have to interact with your a uh, slowly expanding base of readers. You have to give public speeches. You have to go to literature festivals, etc. So it took some time, but I honed my skills. And uh, after that, uh, the another exciting turn in my life, which happened uh, three years ago, two and a half years ago, rather, when I turned towards acting. That was also a very happy accident. And I thought this is perhaps something that I'm not trained to do and I'll not be able to do, but uh, surprisingly, I've done about 15 acting projects now. Ten of them are in post-production. and uh, uh, Wow, so that's you are acting. a celebrity already, I guess. I am not sure what celebrity means, but yes, I've done about five projects which are there in the public domain and ten of them are going to come. These are not very meaty roles. These are what you call in the film uh, language as secondary characters, but they're exciting and challenging in their own way and they're immensely uh, satisfying. Um, uh, most importantly, when it comes to leadership in the way that we understand leadership is, uh, is my experience with the, uh, with the startup world, the entrepreneurship world. That journey started three years ago. Now I am uh, uh, co-founder in two startups. One is an ed tech company called Disha Kiran, 
and the other one is a legal tech company called World Law Alliance. In World Law Alliance, we've just done last month our international event in Dubai, in which uh, uh, you know delegates from 30 odd countries have participated from all over the world, and we had a fabulous event. This year in November, we'll be having an event in in uh, London. So, uh, as you can see, uh, long answer to your first question, but then you know my leadership experience and journey. Uh, of last almost you can say 30 odd years has been something like this immensely exciting uh, kurpit and and i think the reason uh, i you know just to give you a perspective uh, pick uh, professionals or uh, leaders like yourself is i think you bring a very different flavor and my audiences uh, have repeatedly told me that they like it because they are not typically very typecast so they are very unique so which is why i was very excited to have you on our show to hear your story and so i'm sure as we delve deeper into our conversation there'll be more interesting facets of your journey so far which kind of brings me to the topic which i wanted to talk about today is about empowerment and i'm sure in the world you've lived in uh, empowerment very critical you were mentioning about how you motivate your forces and you have to do things which seemingly look dangerous as well yeah so what is your definition of empowerment based on your journey so far uh for me empowerment uh in very simple term terms means uh identifying uh the nature and capabilities of your subordinates and uh encouraging them uh to to achieve their tasks without any fear of failure because as a leader uh, they should have this confidence that in case they go wrong in pursuit of their duties they should have the confidence that you are there to hold your hand um if you give them this confidence if you identify their traits their strengths and their weaknesses um allow them to do what they're supposed to do uh, and rise up to that potential i think in the true sense you are empowering them towards the larger goal of your organization i hope when you say empowerment this is the angle that you're looking at or is it something else no whichever angle you pick is the right angle kulpreet how you okay. see it so however you okay. see it is what i would like to hear so empowerment uh, and, and i think that the beauty of having uh, you know diverse views um helps us as you know academicians to uh, appreciate how a, a single topic can be looked from various angles that just uh, shed so much more light like you know there is you know that there are so many ways of solving a problem yeah and and, and there's only one single way so the more ways you discover the more i think uh, lesser it seems a challenge i guess that's that's my pursuit as well as part of l4 to you know speak with leaders like yourselves to understand are there newer ways of doing things that we are already doing sure so in your journey akulpreet uh, what have been your experience with regards to the benefits of empowerment and have you seen that being used like a competitive advantage uh, in helping organizations achieve their targets absolutely uh in fact to 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 give a simple example if let's say there are two floating units because i'm from the ship world so i can talk in that language better you know there is ship a and there is ship b and ship a is supremely confident because they've got the best crew and there's a competition between these two units and ship b does not have uh very competent people and the, when the competition of these two ships is planned ship a captain is very very confident that he is going to win because he has got the best team but the difference is between the leadership of ship a and ship b ship b uh, treats his people as real assets and identifies as i was saying earlier their key strengths and motivates them and tell them that no matter what you do if you do it well and if you do it with your passion and the knowledge that you have with complete honesty i am there to hold your hand so his unit despite the fact that they have uh, you know not that proficient crew on paper perhaps but they rise up to the occasion so a good leader with bad crew ends up winning the competition 
wow that's that's very well said that's very well said and and i think uh, do you have any anecdotal stories to share with us where you've experienced this first hand yeah absolutely i, I mean uh, couple you know few times in my ship uh, tenure uh you know when you're junior officers on a ship there's a captain there's an executive officer there's an engineer and then other officers are called staff officers but in in a ship of about 100 people in india and there would be about 10 officers so each officer will have about um let's say about 15 or 18 sailors soldiers under him you know what what we call as a division so uh there have been cases where you know one particular divisional officer is not able to control his his division properly because he's he's finding someone one particular soldier who's indisciplined and not listening to him or creating some kind of nuisance or becoming pain in the uh a asterisk asterisk and uh, uh you know these guys sometimes to me or sometimes to other people that they admire as leaders that come to come to them and said uh, sir can you please you know advise us what should we do with this person so my answer always was you don't have to do anything to this person you transfer this person from your division to my division right and when the person when that trouble maker comes to my division i already have a kind of a certain image and name in that unit which i have built over a period of time by by my you know when it comes to armed forces by my uniform by my drill by my the way i address people by my posture by my knowledge by my the way i conduct operations etc etc and uh, this person already comes with this feeling that here is a leader that you know perhaps i i admire or you know that person is less likely to create any trouble uh in my division and more often than not that has been that has been the case of course um you know it not always because there'll be some trouble creators who will be trouble creators and they need to be dealt with in a very disciplined way and there's a procedure for that but 9 out of 10 times just by good leadership i think we straight a lot of things a lot of trouble creators and i've had that experience as well excellent excellent do you see any challenges of empowerment when you when you were in this world or even in your journey do you think yes, empowerment can be a challenge It is a challenge. It's a, you know, it it depends on how much time you spend with your subordinates, with your team, with your organization. How much you understand them? Because uh, if you are going to empower someone or trust someone who is not, you know, um, of the level that you know needs to be trusted that much with, uh, perhaps that person is going to take advantage of you. You know, so um, it is a combination of the kind of fear you put. into your subordinates fear does not mean the fear as a word that we understand maybe it is reverence you know that kind of uh, impression that you have and uh, you identify people uh, according to their qualities and uh, empower the right ones because if you empower a right the wrong person and give him something that he does not deserve uh, at the 11th hour he or she is going to create some trouble for you So it's all about, I think, identifying traits, identifying qualities, uh, which is a challenge in itself before a leader. But that comes with uh, comes by the fact that uh, if you decide to spend more time with them, if you try to play games with them, games by what I mean is volleyball or whatever. You know, you go on treks with them, you go on picnics, you do social events, and you do some community interactions and drives. and you know those kind of things where the real personality outside the professional life is also visible to you and then you you come to know that who is the person who deserves this kind of um this kind of trust because if you identify you see not everyone is going to is going to be efficient and honest and transparent and trustworthy for your organization they're going to be you know a mixed bag of everything so if you what I'm all I'm saying i think i'm <laughs> I know to put it, but I hope I'm clear enough. Uh, what I'm saying is, if you if you trust, if you give trust to a wrong person, you empower a wrong person, then uh, you are creating trouble for yourself. So that's uh, the problem with with empowerment. I, I totally agree. In fact, uh, I I realize that if you don't have, it's like anything in moderation is good. Anything in excess is also dangerous, right? And I guess in in yeah. the world you've lived in, it it. 
would have very disastrous results right you empower somebody and you trust somebody and they and they and they drop the ball as they say it could uh, have very serious impact in the world you have lived in where yeah life and death i think so and also you know for example i have experienced this a similar situation on the film sets that i have gone to you know when you interact That's with the uh, yeah when you interact with spot boys in um and uh, you know some of the dress designers costume designers were a little older in age a man or a woman and you give uh, respect they don't expect respect from because you know actors have a certain uh, kind of an attitude which comes because of the pressure of the lines and the uh, you know delivery and sometimes memorizing and all that it generally very irritated so the the costume guys the spot guys or the technicians or you know all these people are not expecting great behavior from you but you know even if you take extra precaution or, or maybe care to address the older people with with more respect and everyone else as if you are you respect what they do um then there are chances and we we, we don't we don't know this but you've been never you know you one can never be sure who's connected where and uh, a good word put in by someone who might seem insignificant to you but uh might be knowing someone very important so the word word spreads like when i go to film industry uh, and i i hear all these stories from these guys who become your friends in the set so they have stories about every actor and i've seen one constant thing remo wherever i've gone 15 sets i've gone i've even acted now in a malayalam film i was in cochin for 15 days shooting for a malayalam film it's such a great opportunity i'm so grateful for these wonderful people but one story has been common you know there are some actors who've got great impression and there are some actors who do not have that good who are not liked by people and the ones who've got great impression are the ones who are doing very well so i think as a leader it's not just about of about motivating all the time and showing your knowledge and having a great personality but it's also these nuances of treating people in the right way you know respecting them and not respecting them because just for the heck of respecting them respecting them because you really respect them i respect our spot by us it's outside my vanity van you know just under a shade of a tree while i'm sitting on in the air conditioned environment and he's sitting at 44 45 degrees for the whole day and every 2 hours he knocks at the door and says sir can i get you something and you know sometimes i feel that he's also drawing certain kind of a pride for what he is doing and i think that needs to be respected that needs to be protected you know so uh, as a leader if you have this sense of um respect for everyone else irrespective of what they're doing i think that goes a, a great way in elevating your standard as a leader, standard as a leader and gets you more work gets you more recognition gets you more success gets you more money and you really not done anything <laughs> well said. Part, uh, other than being honest absolutely well said Could simple be. investment yeah. absolutely which kind of brings me to the last question of our conversation today sure what is your advice to young leaders entrepreneurs maybe young actors what is your advice to them uh most of the things i have said already uh, what i wanted to say but just in a nutshell um first of all i want to say that i am someone who's also done a lot of mistakes in my pursuit of being a leader and the kind of works that i've done uh, i've had bad days i've sometimes done things which i reflect back now and think that i should not have done i think as a leader the message that i can give is uh, you know whatever we do we must first of all learn from our mistakes that's very important and the second thing is the most simple and the powerful thing that i can share perhaps is which i've repeated in in answering some of your questions is the word honesty i think more than anything else if you're honest you know even if simple thing like i want to reduce let's say 10 kg of my weight or 5 kg of my weight and uh, i have a very ambitious plan and which is not implementable but i'm you know putting myself under the pressure and doing and i'm not able to achieve, able to achieve much but i think if you're honest just have a honest plan have an honest approach you will be able to do certain things in certain days certain days you'll not be able to do certain things but as long as you are honestly going in pursuit of anything i think it is possible uh the third thing that i want to say is which uh, uh uh prinka chopra very famously said and i think it's such a powerful thing again just like honesty such a simple thing 
And that applies to everything in life to all of us. And that is confidence. And she just said, if you're, if you're confident, you can achieve anything, you know. She says, I, 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 I got this, uh, you know, international, you know, uh, um, uh, beauty pageant she won because she was just, she just went there confidently. So young entrepreneurs, if you have a business idea, if you have a plan, just be confident to take that first step. And, uh, you know, the, the ways will part. So uh, that's it. Life is not so complicated. Don't overthink. Don't worry too much. Don't always keep thinking about competition or, you know, we need to just focus on elevating ourselves and everything else will fall. So honesty, confidence and learning from your mistakes are three things that I think I can probably share with everyone. I'm not that super achiever or super great. So please pardon me if you, if you think I've spoken too much. Not at all, Gurpreet, not at all. I think I and uh, I, I, I reserved the best for the last. I didn't want to share that we are also college mates and uh, so we've known each other for <laughs> over 37 years. So I, I yes. thought I'll leave that for the for the last. So, so I, I know your journey, So which, is, which fills my heart with pride to see the, your achievements and your success. And needless to say, Thank I you. shall continue being your fan in every way I oh. can. And, and uh, keep cheering you. you, you have, <laughs> thank you so much. You achieved so much yourself, and I'm really grateful for this opportunity to interact with your listeners. Thank you, thank you so much, Gurpreet. And, and needless to say, I shall selfishly, uh, you know, take advantage of our long association and friendship, and would love you to join our uh, L Forum events in the future as well. And oh, certainly, uh, and, a pleasure. Uh, I, I think you bring a very different flavor to leadership. And I wish your journey all success. In, and I know you are coming up with the next, uh, you know, your next release. So I know I would love you to tell us a little more about what's happening with Brahmaputra. A couple of words, maybe. Yeah, just, just two sentences. First of June, Brahmaputra comes out. I am so blessed that I am co-writer of Mr. Vijendra Prasad, the most celebrated film writer of entire India. He's written Telugu uh, movies, he's written Tamil movies, he's written other South Indian languages movies, he's written great blockbusters in Hindi language as well. This is his first book and he's chosen me as his co-writer. I'm so, so grateful. It's been published by HarperCollins India. It's, a, it's, 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 it's first of this two-part series and it's about this uh, great leader that India had, about which a lot of people do not know. That's called Lachit Borpukan. He was the general of a home empire, which was a Hindu empire in Assam at a time when Mughals had occupied almost all of India except the peninsular part. And uh, the Mughals uh, invaded home during Lachit Borkukan's time more than eight or nine times. And he was able to defend his territory, again, leadership with, with less resources, less people, less equipment, less armament, etc. But uh, by leadership. So it's a great story. Sorry. Uh, I got excited about the book. I think it's spoken more than I should have. So, no, I think yeah, no, I, I, I would like better. you to because, uh, you know, I am a big fan of history. And also, I'll, I'll probably digress for 30 seconds myself. I'm a big okay. war movie buff. I'm a big war movie buff. And uh, you were talking about those missed opportunities, right? You know, I'm sure you've read it in your own military history. The world would have been different if uh, Adolf Hitler did not have a headache and go to sleep. And you know, and 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 did, did not, and he picked up the phone when they called him on 6 June 1944. You know, the world would have been a different place possibly, and oh, and, do, and, yeah. and and nobody expected, you know, Normandy. Everybody expect Padre Kale, right? So that one Correct. small distance. I mean, there are so many stories. The Battle of Midway. I mean, you're, you're a naval person. I'm sure you read, you've yeah, read about the course, Battle of, of Midway. Course. Yeah, there are enough course, stories yes. where. You know, old Tora 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 story or the Battle of Midway story. Yeah. You know, everything, small decisions, right, has yeah. changed history. You don't realize that you are making history at that point of time when you are, you think it's a very small thing, but it's that butterfly effect, which is why I get excited talking to leaders because, uh, you know, in my whole doctoral journey, uh, my chair said that, you know, at the end of the whole journey, Ringo, you'll realize you know little more than nothing. <laughs> so, so it's a vast ocean out there. So I'm yeah. just trying to find my little few drops of wisdom. So through people like you. So thank you again, Kulpreet. Wish you all success. And uh, 
looking forward to staying connected and having many more such conversations in the future as well thank you very much thank you it's really a pleasure thank you thank very you. much thank you like share and subscribe to the el forum channel